Uh, so buckle your buckle your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. We're gonna be here for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and so with that, we are gonna move on to the some of the things that are actually happening. It has been a quiet off season outside of the Carson Wentz move. There hasn't really been much going on. So I mean, we're gonna touch on a couple of the recent. We got football to talk made. about. We, we got a couple of things to talk uh-huh. about. A lot of you know, a lot of looking into the future, but uh. One thing that we did uh, do that I'm very excited about, we were talking about it. Uh, we were worried about it. Did we go? We were like, why hasn't it happened yet? Finally got it done. Resigned Joey Sly to a two-year deal. Uh, we talked about when he came in, didn't miss a kick uh, for the team. I, I love what he has. Another one of the ex-Panthers coming over. Ron's boys. Let's go. He healthy, two years. How you feel about it? Yeah, it's about time. I mean, what have we been doing this whole time? He was our best kicker that we've had in a long time. So let's keep him on board. Um, Yeah. yeah, So, I mean, finally. That's all I can say is finally. Exactly. We needed it. We needed it. Uh, And I'm glad we're able to uh, uh, secure that position. Now let him just get into training and get ready for the season. Um, Sticking on special teams, however – we did lose uh, the first real threat at return, a kick return that we've had since uh, Banks. Mr. DeAndre Carter goes to the L.A. Chargers. Good for him for being able you know, parlay this season into getting another uh, place, but that stinks because, you know, I was really liking him at kick return. He didn't, you know, I, he broke, you know, the only what, one or the only one, but – he still gave us that threat, you know, and there was a couple times where it was a shoelace, you know, one little trip up from him going. So I like what he had. And towards the end of the year, when we had all the injured receivers, he ended up being a, a, a surprisingly good force at receiver for us down the stretch. So, you know, this one kind of stings because this is one of the places that we have definitely talked about wide receiver. What do you think, Will? Yeah, I don't I don't really understand this one that much because the contract he signed in L.A. was not going to be that big of an upgrade from what he got last year. And I know we don't have a lot of money to play with for the rest of the, um, you, know, you know, in our cap, and we got to save some for rookies. But it's not like we were going to break the bank to sign this guy. Now, I think what it, it does is it shows, I mean, there is obviously in the whole league a de-emphasis on kick returners. I mean, the fact that he broke one for us was fantastic, but how many times are our team starting at the 25, you know? Right. And I think it's only a matter of time before that even gets eliminated because we're just wasting 30 seconds of, of time and, you know, commercial yeah. time and all that to because we're all starting on the 25. I, think I heard that they were pretty, talking about that. I heard they that they – yeah, yeah, they it's were trying common. to maybe do that. I was like, oh, I mean, they already started with it by pushing it up, like you said, you know. So they're all touchbacks, but yeah, keep going. Sorry, about exactly. That. Yeah, so I think it could be an indication of that. But like you mentioned, they said it perfectly. He impressed me as a wide receiver way yeah. more than I thought than he would. Yes. And yes. I start thinking like, all right, so we got a quarterback who can throw it. He's quick. Why wouldn't we have him in the fold and just see what if he's a deep play threat? You know, what if he can he can help out a little bit more? So I am kind of surprised that they didn't go after him. I think this is an indication of what they think about their wide receiver depth for or what they're going to do in the, in the draft. I think they kind of felt like there's not going to be room for him on this team as an impact player at wide receiver. So we don't really need him to be a kick returner either. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Um, yeah, it's the it's thing. Good for him. Glad he was able to, you know, work this out, get himself a, a, a better position. But it definitely does open up a hole at that. But if if what you're saying is true, and and that's what it's looking like, you know, there's becoming less and less of an emphasis on kick returner in the league. So. You know, unless you're a Devin Hester at punt return as well, you know, right. they don't really, you can't, you know, they got it, they got it, you know, the books, all about money, man. So, yeah, and, and it's interesting. We we do this, but again, that's just two little small moves. Obviously, the draft is two weeks away, but, you know, Ron, Ron is kind of, he's got to have some choice words about this, you know, talking about free agency, talking about kind of what he is thinking to do and where he's looking at. Um, 
what will talk, talk to us about that man yeah so he had some kind of weird comments last week where he basically said you know free agency actually starts after the draft he said that's when we can really go look and sign some players and um and, and improve this team and it didn't go over very well right uh, do you have access to uh anton's what right. oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, it's so perfect. Yeah, free agency starts after the draft. What? Yeah. What have we been doing this this last couple of weeks? So, one thing I think it's important to, to remember is Ron is our PR guy. We don't hear from the general manager. We don't hear from the owner. And so Ron is the guy who's trying to spin the positive news. And that's what he's doing here. He did it at the beginning of free agents, agency by saying, hey, we're a destination for quarterbacks. We got good receivers. We got, you know, young talent. We are a, we are a good place for, for, uh, uh, for, for a quarterback to try and get Russell Wilson or Aaron Rodgers. So it's a little bit of he's trying to control the narrative. Hmm. But I also think he's also kind of talking about the fact that when we made that deal for Wentz, that changed our free agency plan. Yes. You and I were so excited for a free agency. And then we laid a giant egg during <laughs> yeah. What? what happened? Like, All right, well, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> we're, everyone's signing people and we're, we're just kind of hanging out here, no. you know? So I think, I think that kind of changed their philosophy. And, you know, we do, we do talk about, you know, the Charles Leno's, Eric Flowers, who were signings after the draft. And there's been mention of us looking at Joe Hayden. And so I oh. think he, he brings up a good point where at this point in free agency, you're best off waiting to see what you get in the draft, see who falls to you, to then know, okay, where are some of our holes? Where are depth pieces? Where do, I, where do we need guys who can, who can come and play that we weren't able to fill in the draft? So I get what he's saying. But I would really like for him to remember that free agency starts in early March. This is your right. chance to, to improve the team. Right. Let's be a little <laughs> bit more aggressive next year. Let's be a little more active. What yeah, please. <laughs> we need we need something to talk about, right? Let me let me go ahead and go there. I just want we need something to talk about. This, you know, he has really been silent outside of the one move. And I understand that Carson Wentz and taking on that, you know, 28 mil. That did set us back. Certain things happened as as a cause of that, as you know, letting a couple guys go and this and that. But you know, we we come on, man. So, like you mentioned, Tyreek Hill, Juju Smith Schuster, uh, Mitch Witt, uh somewhere, Mitch Trubisky, uh, all these different guys going all these different places, and we're just sitting here watching Wagner goes, Von Miller goes, and we're just like, all right, you know, some of those contracts we couldn't touch, but some of the others, like, come on, man. We could we could get these guys. So it's you know, I I I get it, but being a fan, going back to what you said, I remember you said last last two weeks ago, you said I'm a fan. Forget about the, the you know the paycheck. <laughs> Pay them the dang on money and let's go. That's that's where I'm at. Because like, you know, at the end of the day, you know, hey, okay, we're doing things fiscally with this and that. No, but you're right, it's not my money. So no. Go ahead, pay. Let's go. Pay up. Get what you need to get. Not, I'm not saying old Dan Snyderish, you know, uh, uh, Hainsworth, Deion Sanders, Bruce Smith type stuff. But some of these guys that are like at their career. Look, yeah, Anton saying, remember Hainsworth. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but you know, some of these guys, they're still. They might be older, but you can get them on a one-year deal, like we talked about. Bring them in here. Let them help the team. Let them teach the guys. Help the chemistry. These are things that you can do to keep us moving. But we talked about it two years ago. We didn't. We had a quiet off season. We got two guys that we didn't think were big. Had it. Had it. We won it last year. Flash splashy moves. Everything fell through. Let's see what happens this year. Yeah. Well, and I started wondering, like. Is is Ron like? Oh, did we have buyer's remorse mm. last year? Did we sign a couple guys? Like say, like they went out and got William Jackson the third, and then all of a sudden the draft they're like, oh dang, we could have gotten this corner instead, but we got William Jackson, so we can't we can't go get him. Like I just started, you know, I started speculating, like, oh well, maybe maybe this is a reaction to what happened last year. I I don't know. I'm not I'm not really sure. Could be. Um, but I do have a have a thought behind this. Okay. I think I know why they're being stingy. All, All right. right. And I think they're they're trying to get guys cheap. 
it's because they're paying attention to their cap for the future. Yeah. All right. We're kind of talking a little bit about it. There's a lot of chatter about Terry McLaurin and how we're going to extend it. All right. Washington does have some very young guys who are getting on year three, four, and five, and they're about to either need extensions or they're going to walk. And I think Ron and them have eyes on the next year or two and being able to have enough money to re-sign their own guys. You know, Deron Payne right now is, this is his last year. It's also Terry McLaurin's last year. Yeah. You know, so we've got two starters there that are big contributors to that we probably want to keep at least one of them. And so I know he, they need to hold on to some of their cap space. But the year after that, you've got Montez Sweat coming off the books mm-hmm. and Antonio Gibson. You know, because the the when you the beauty of, of drafting well, which we have in the third round, which we've gotten a Gibson, we've gotten a McLaurin, we got a um, Benjamin St. Juice, is you only get them for four years on that rookie contract. Yeah. Whereas with that first round pick, you can get that five year deal. So we've got some players that are coming up here for the future. And I think they're trying to load up because after Sweat and Gibson, you've got Chase Young and I believe Cam Curl, who yeah. they value, you know, along with, uh, you know, uh, you know, St. Juice will be coming after that, which maybe he develops, maybe Diami develops, who knows, mm-hmm. you know, so I said like one of these things where I think, I think they're looking to the future as to why he's, he's basically, he's trying to spin it to say, we need to sign guys cheap right now because we've got bigger signings Goals. in the future coming Long this term. summer, next summer, after yeah. that. You know, because let's think about this. If Terry McLaurin's going to get maybe close to $25 million a year, what is Chase Young going to get if he right. fulfills what we think he can be? Right. He's going to be a $100 million player. At least. And so you've got to you gotta build for that. Just as much as our, our we got crushed this year in free agency with, with Carson Wentz's contract, if he sticks around, that's another close to $30 million. So I think, that, I think that's what they're trying to do. They yeah. just don't want to say, hey, guys, we got to be cheap because of this, this reason. Oh, right, right. Shout out to Ab saying, what's oh, good, Ab. fellas? Nice, nice. Hello. What up, man? Anton saying, Rondell Moore. Yes, we remember that. We already gave you respect last time. That was a couple weeks ago, buddy. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. All right. <laughs> he said, I'm with you. I'm with you, Will. Uh, they're really watching the cap. Yeah. 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 I mean, like you said, Cam Curls next year. Then you got Payne, Clint. Yeah. There are people you got to pay. All right. Ab says, cap savings don't matter if you aren't here to spend it. Uh, Ron Rivera is at a point in time where he needs to prove something. In my opinion, Ron Rivera is close to win now scenario, huh? Yeah, he is. I mean, year three, he's mentioned it. This is the this is the turning point. How much more of a longer leash? How many seven win seasons can he have? No, right. he's right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate you, Ab. Hope all is well, my friend. 